Oh, we're back in this. What is going on, people? How are you? Hope you had a great week working in commercial real estate. Um, I know it's been a minute since I made one of these commercial real estate tips videos, but um, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff happening for me in my business, in my life, and um, you know, had to handle business, had to take care of business, had to um, had to do work, and um, that's what I hope you're doing as well. But for this video, I am back and I'm going to teach you the 10 important things you must know as an office leasing agent. Now, this is where you are representing an office landlord and you're responsible for leasing out their office space to a new tenant and filling their building full of other businesses, other companies uh, that are employing people and providing good products, good services doing useful things for humanity and uh, growing the community, creating more opportunities, generating more tax revenue for reinvestment back into improving infrastructures for communities worldwide. And, uh, and you're the catalyst for all that. You're helping these businesses to expand into new locations, in this case, into office space. So let's get into it. Number one is you need to know the rent, uh, which is the price per square foot, um, and you could also calculate the monthly rent, uh, just depending on how big of a space, uh, of an office space you are renting out. Perhaps it's helpful to know different types of rent for different types of uh, spaces. Uh, that's helpful information to know. And you want to know whether this rent, uh, this moves on to number two, uh, you want to know whether this rent includes the nets. These are the net pass-through charges, um, such as the utilities, the common area maintenance, any sort of insurances, you know, these types of costs. Uh, if it's all in, if there's just one price and uh, that's for everything, then that's what's known as a gross rent, okay? Uh, but if maybe some things are included, but then other things aren't, then that's what's known as a modified gross rent. And if all expenses are passed on to the tenant and they're responsible for everything from paying their own utilities to paying the insurance on the building and uh, and everything, then that's what's known as a triple net lease. So you need to know uh, whether or not uh, the nets are included into that rent or if they are separate, grouped together, you need to know that information. Number three is you need to know the square footage, specifically the rentable square footage and the usable square feet. Uh, so the rentable square feet and the usable square feet of uh, the space that's available for rent in that office. And the rentable square footage is the uh, usable portion occupied by the tenant, including the shared space. Okay, so whatever common area that that tenant gets access to, uh, that is included in the rentable square footage along with the uh, actual space of that office. However, uh, just the specific area that's occupied by the tenant in that office, that's what's known as the usable square feet. So you need to know those two numbers. Number four, you need to know about the parking situation. How many parking spaces are there? Uh, are they assigned? Are tenants only allowed a certain number? What's the guest parking policy? So uh, know exactly at least how many parking spaces there are and how many employees there are. And uh, on average, is the parking lot pretty packed and there's no spaces whatsoever? or you know, are there plenty of spaces available? You need to know that type of information. Next, number five, you need to know about the building security. So is there a, like a front desk with some security people manning that desk and, and keeping an eye on, on who's coming and going and what's going on with that office building? Or is it pretty much just anyone off the street can just walk in that building and, uh, you know, there's minimal security. Um, whether there are any sort of closed circuit TV cameras, maybe an alarm system. Uh, do you need badges to, to access the building? What is the security situation uh, for that office building uh, is very important and you will need to relay that information over to potential tenants because they will definitely ask about that. Number six is you need to know about any past issues about that building, whether there's ever been any, you know, any history of flooding, if it's near some sort of a uh, uh, water, uh, perhaps a river or a lake, uh, whether there's ever been a roof leak, any sort of structural damage, fires, you know, any sort of past issues that a potential tenant uh, should be aware about because who knows that past issue might arise again during their tenancy 
or they might see notice something like uh, you know a couple of ceiling tiles might be discolored they might ask hey was there ever a roof leak or what's going on with a uh, you know you know those ceiling tiles they will definitely ask about any sort of past issues and it's just better to be upfront about these types of things just be honest uh, represent that building and help that tenant to determine whether or not this is a good fit and uh, they will appreciate your honesty and just being upfront with any sort of past issues that building might have had number seven who are the other tenants in the building is there competition allowed let's say for example uh, you have like an insurance company in one office suite and then across the hall they might have their competition another insurance agency uh, is that allowed uh, how do tenants feel about that uh, would the landlord allow that, that sort of uh, that sort of thing to happen in that office building or would the landlord place a, a sort of restriction on you know only one type of tenant uh, can be occupied so we, we can only have one type of financial advisor one insurance provider um, you know one medical provider you know what what will the landlord allow as far as uh, tenants and the type of companies that they run uh, in the building and is there any sort of uh, maximum allowed okay number eight you need to know about the zoning now typically uh, if it is commercially zoned, then usually office uh, is uh, is usually allowed. However, there might be other things that are allowed in that commercial zoning, such as industrial uh, type of structures that can be built. How would the people who are working in that office feel about, I don't know, like industrial uh, type of properties, like warehouses and manufacturing facilities popping up as their neighbors? How does that affect business? If you have people coming into that office building to visit you and then they're, they're seeing all sorts of uh, other stuff popping up, uh, that's something that you should know about as far as the zoning of that uh, office space. Number nine is you need to know about the public transportation access uh, to that building and whether or not it is accessible for, for public transportation. These are offices, you have people from all walks of life who might be having to come in to, to visit these companies or they might be employed by these companies and they need a, a way to uh, get to work and how close is that public transportation uh, to that office building and finally number 10 is you need to know the distance to other amenities such as restaurants stores hotels you know things that uh, people who work in that office building visitors who come by and um, you know other people who uh, might be uh, going to that office might want to have access to these other types of amenities and you know what sort of location is that office in and then you will be able to tell people well what sort of amenities are located near that office that uh, might not be located near other types of offices that other tenants are are uh, potentially look, looking at as well so if you know all 10 of these things about the office space that you're leasing then you will just uh, be a tremendous source of knowledge be a great resource for people who are looking to expand their business into that office and they're looking to you as a resource as an expert as someone that they can trust to help them to expand their business to employ more people to generate more tax revenue to create more opportunities to uh, you know just help more and more communities worldwide with useful businesses useful companies that have found great office space thanks to you being an awesome office leasing agent hope you found this helpful we'll see you in the next one bye for now